Okay, uh, we will continue on this equation of motion in horizontal plane. See, we had this equation just in the last lecture. I just write that v into psi dot and y was m of uh, v dot minus plus I think u into psi dot and n equal to i into psi dot. Okay. Now, you see there is one thing that is um, uh, 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 that modification we can do on this is that sometime what happened these equations are written when the axis was a center of gravity uh, you know g. Okay. Sometime what happened it is easier to define that when the uh, for an arbitrary uh, uh, axis system somewhere else here. See here I have taken a, this equation of motion are taken where the body system is having its axis as center of gravity. But sometimes supposing it is having an axis which is some other location a o, o here, so that the center of gravity is uh, uh, the coordinates are x g and y g. Okay. In other words, I, I define it with respect to another coordinate system, then an certain extra terms come in. In fact, it simply gets modified as uh, I will just write down that uh, some extra terms will come in here or rather let me do it in a second one. Let me let me draw it here. This is my this is my g. This is my x. This is my y. But if I took a axis gen in a general sense somewhere else, with this to be the coordinate axis, so that this is my x g, and you know. In other words, if I took let me put it if I took a body coordinate system somewhere else so that the center of gravity has a coordinate of x g y g in other words you can say center of gravity is say 5 meter forward of the mid say I took a midship. So, center of gravity is 5 meter forward of midship. The reason is because sometimes some of the definitions are easier uh, for a hull with respect to a geometric fixed point than the center of gravity. When you are defining lines plan you, you, you are better off taking midship as the origin point not x g is not it not the center of gravity because center of gravity can be 2.354 meter uh, forward of midship. So, it becomes difficult. So, as a result we if it is easy if we want to want we can choose the body coordinate system as some geometry point and then say that center of gravity is x g meter forward of that y g meter starboard of that. If I do that this equation of motion actually simply uh, gets modified by some extra terms you end up getting something like uh, I just write this we had here psi dot v minus y g into psi double dot minus x g into psi dot square. This, this two extra term comes in y equation uh, m v dot plus psi dot into u minus y g into psi dot square plus x g into psi double dot and n equal to i z psi double dot plus m x g into v dot plus u psi dot minus y g into u dot minus psi dot v. See normally why I say that is that most of the ships sometime it will be easier to have some x g, y g will not be there because normally you would always have the uh, center of gravity on the central line. Okay. So, normally this will not be there, but this will be there because you might want to use your midship as the coordinate system. So, you might have only a, some kind of value of x g, but not y g, but the, this is a trivial thing never mind this, this is only to tell you that the same equation of motion can be easily rewritten in another coordinate system instead of center of gravity. Okay. In other words, you have shifted it. See, I have shifted the axis system slightly forward or slightly on the starboard side or whatever, it, it, uh, only for convenience because so it is YG. Uh, YG is, yeah, XG is obviously the uh, x coordinate of center of gravity. In, in other words, it is LCG, as simple as that. YG is TCG, but TCG is zero for ships normally. So you are in. Let us say I am defining this all this hydrodynamic this equation of motion with respect to a coordinate system with origin at midship. 
okay. In that case my uh, uh, and the LCG is 3 meter forward therefore x g will be plus 3 meter y g will be 0. Remember that the turning is defined with respect to g but geometry I might define with respect to another point. This is trivial never mind this but it is just for completion I am showing that. So this is my one side of the equation okay. Now comes the, the, uh, the uh, difficult part of it see or rather let me see from the simplified one. I have got now this force equal to mass into acceleration okay. What I want to now know? I want to know that the ship was moving on a straight line. Remember it was initially moving on a straight line. So what it had? It has u to be a constant 10 knots. What was v? v was 0 because it was not having any v motion, no, no surge motion. What was r? r was also 0 okay. Now what happened? The idea is like this. You have given x also y was 0 forget x part I mean I am just going to talk about this two let us say this two because these two are the one basically looking into y direction and the moment x direction is the force going. So let me look at just this two let us understand the physics behind it what we are trying to look at. Initially I have y 0 v dot is 0 psi dot is 0 so 0 equal to 0 no problem no force no motion. Now what happened? I am assuming that I have introduced a slight y, small y, delta y. What happened? Moment I give delta y, there will be delta v, delta psi, small psi and small y, this thing. Moment these two are there, this is going to influence y again. Then I have an equation of motion, small change of y because I have given a y which has caused a small v and small psi dot. This in turn would have caused a y which in turn would cause a psi and um, uh, v and psi dot. Now we have to find out if I made a small change from its straight line motion what would happen in which direction my v and psi will grow. Again I want to tell you this <coughs> I was going on a straight line I had no sway velocity no yaw velocity I had no force sway force your moment everything is 0. Now by an external mechanism I have given a disturbance. What happened? By giving a disturbance I have introduced a v dot and v and psi dot because let us say somebody has come and caused it to just move okay. Moment I have given this which is a small number which is uh, because you have just given say, say let us say by some disturbance I have got some kind of a your sway velocity of 0.1 meter per second somebody has pushed it and left it but that would give me a y. Now this y in turn would then I have to go back to this equation of motion I have got a y then this y would in turn decides my v dot and psi dot. Now suppose the v dot and psi dot this the y that y I have got increases v dot which will increase the y which will increase v dot I will become an end up into instability. What I want to find out therefore when I make a small perturbation, small change from its straight line motion the nature of the forces resulting because of a small velocity introduced yaw and sway velocity introduced should they grow with time or should they diminish with time. If they diminish with time then it is a stable shape grow with time it is not a stable shape. So I need to actually express this this now what is happening that that is the most important part that will come this y force nobody knows what is y force but I know that this y force depends on v v dot psi psi dot because obviously it will depend in some sense on the forces uh, on the various motion parameters. See I know that y and n this will be depending on I know what it will depend on it may depend on u u dot it will depend on v v dot it will depend on psi dot and psi double dot or rather r and r dot. It does not depend on psi remember psi is just a location you know wherever it is there the location. So it depends on the all the three velocities and three accelerations in general we, it may not depend on all but I have to assume that because you see because I have given a velocity on the hull I am getting y and n and a velocity and acceleration had there been no velocity and acceleration had there been no motion this direction or no motion this direction I had no y and n. So I am getting y and n 
because I have got somebody from outside God's finger something has pushed and created a, a V and V dot one of those you know or all of this and this all of this obviously cause this. So, this depends on that, but I do not know how this depends on that. Now, I have to find out this side of the expression in some uh, mathematical way that is what where this uh, explanation I am trying to tell now. Okay. Now, you see this we understand let me take one by one one part let me say y. Okay, y is actually let me say it is function of u, u dot v, v dot r, r dot. Okay. Now, we use a concept called Taylor expansion. What does it tell? Suppose there is a graph here, graph f here against x, say there is an f x, it looks like that. This is my say x 0 and this is my delta x. I want to find out what is my f at x 0 plus delta x, how much? I know that means I or rather let me put it the other way around maybe it is better to put this as x 0. So, this is my f x 0 and this as delta x. So, that this is my f x 0 plus delta x it is this very small is it writing or you can make out still you can more or less make out. See the question is that if I know mathematically a function value at some point I and I want to find out what would be the value of the function at another point close by nearby small distance away. In the first approximation I can tell that it is equal to this value f x 0 plus delta x equal to f x 0 plus delta x into d by d x of f x 0. In other words this slope see I can tell that this value is equal to I mean I, I, I simply assume that this part is a straight line. Then what happened if x, basically I am saying that the, my estimated value is this point. What is this point? What is this much? This much is delta x into the slope. It is delta x into the slope at that point plus the original value. So, this is up to first approximation if you want you can actually keep on expanding that further but yeah half row everybody knows that perhaps. So, I, I need not go through this is my first order Taylor expansion. What we are going to do is basically that because I want to find out what is my y and what is my n about the initial value which was 0. Okay, initial value was 0. So, my y 0 n 0 see initially I had u 0, u dot 0, v 0, v dot 0, r 0, r dot 0. Now, I have got u plus delta u. V dot, v dot plus delta v u dot etcetera I have got some changes. So, you see if I use a Taylor expansion for this, this is my own notes only so I can sort of go then I can say like this I will just take the y value y is actually function of we can write this this way u v psi dot u dot v dot psi double dot. So, I can say this to be equal to See now what, what think of this I am trying to find out y now initially or, or let me put it this way therefore, let me say y at see y is a function of all that y at is difficult to say oh, no no. No, let me not write that way. See, I have this y. Now, I want to expand that. Now, that is what I am going to do. I want to expand that or I want to find what is y, which is this side about its mean value. Initially, I have got u 0, v 0, psi dot 0, u dot 0, v dot 0. Uh, I am calling this 0 to be the initial values. Okay, The suffix 0 here refers to initial values. I had initially, initially these values. So, what happened when this is the value? So, in other words, uh, my u equal to u initial plus delta u. Okay, v equal to my v initial plus delta v etcetera etcetera. Okay. So, I had got initial value plus a small disturbance my, 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 what is my y obviously y is going to be 
basically delta y this is this value at all that you know u0 v0 etc plus u delta u into d by d of u of f you know f y all that plus delta v of d by d v of f y all that. I have to take one by one because there are six terms delta of psi dot d by d psi dot f y all that plus now delta u dot d by d u dot plus let me write it down fully delta v dot d by d v dot delta psi dot dot d by d psi dot dot f y of like that. See what I have done. I want to find out what is my value of f y in this expanded about the initial value of u 0. That means I have initially u 0 v 0 psi 0 u dot 0 v dot 0 psi dot 0 that is what my initial condition. Now I want to I have made them slightly different by adding a delta u. What is my value of this full thing when I know this initial part? So when I know this initial part what is my full thing that is what I want to know. This is actually my total y at that point. This is my what is this? This is my y under initial condition. This is my y under final condition. So I have got y at final condition is y at initial condition plus all the small changes. This is the physics behind it. Okay. Now comes the interesting part of it. Now you see what we are doing is here is that the initial condition we are doing. Okay. What is my initial condition? The initial equilibrium condition was the ship going in a straight line initially. So initially I have got okay, uh, or rather let me write it in another, another piece of paper that would be easier. Okay. So we have got this condition. Now let us see initial condition. Initially the ship is going that means I have got u0 to be u because the forward uh, value is u but all others are all are 0, right, because obviously I am going uh, on a, on a uh, uh, sort of a steady line. So therefore what happened also remember that y initial is also 0, there was no y initial. So if you look back at that, see here, if you look back at the equation, this part was initially 0, okay. And the y that I am getting is the small y that has got disturbed. Now here delta u is um, uh, the, uh, the change in the, the, the delta v is a change of velocity, delta v is etc. But you know all these things there is some kind of that, that uh, um, uh, I mean uh, this, this initial condition we are putting it. Actually we could have put u minus u0 etc. But if I put this initial condition here in this equation what I end up getting is something like uh, we will we'll get end up getting some, some kind of relation. Now there is a uh, 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 way of looking at the, the part, see this f y, this f y, this part is nothing but y. So yeah, so now what I mean uh, with, with initial y etc. Now what happened that I can actually rewrite this equation in terms of d y by d u, d y by d v etc. because it is easier to write that way. Okay. Uh, I will come to that uh, in, a, in a minute. Uh, so I wanted to another color of uh, pen. So this color is important. Uh, 
I have got this y here in etc. Now I end up getting this disturbance y again looking back at, back at that this is 0. So, I have got all these extra terms and I am going to write these extra terms as delta u into d by du of instead of f y I, I write them y because that this part is nothing but basically y whatever the y is. So, we what we are, we end up writing is that we have got here uh, See what I am doing is that all I am doing is writing this same thing again where I have made this 0. See because now uh, looking back at that this part is equal to 0. This parts, these parts are nothing but y. So, instead of writing this f i full thing after all f i of whatever is nothing but y you know y equal to f i. So, I can write the word y instead of writing f i full thing. It is d v of in fact what we have done. See, uh, it is more easily seen y value at a point later is y value at 0 plus that small change into dy by dv plus d you know etcetera y varies on various things. So, basically the y value this, this is my y this initial y was actually 0 and I want to find out what is my, this y this y equal to the initial y plus dy by dv into that small change see it suppose it is actually v. So, it is this y equal to this y plus dy by dv into v plus dy by dv into etcetera etcetera when the dy by dv are the slope of the curve y at origin. Uh, uh, maybe it is it is uh, one more diagram I want to explain that because I think this might have been slightly diff difficult for you. See what we have done here is something like that you see I have got this here y force this is my y y of course is a function of many things. So, let me take that y see y is a function of u u dot etcetera. So, let me take y 1 by 1 let me take this as a function of v then I have to take y as a function of uh, you know v dot 6 of them I have to take. Now, what happened I want to find out this part is my delta v ok. What is my this y in terms of this this y is nothing but dy by d v into delta v. This is to be taken of course, at v equal to 0 that means, dy by dv that is slope at this line into delta v. This is exactly what we have that is what exactly is my uh, Taylor expansion. In fact, all that we have done here was that we wrote f y, but we replace them by y. So, this ex expression that I have written here is straightforward. You have got delta y dy by du all the slopes are to be evaluated remember that at the origin these slopes to be at origin all these slopes all these y slopes are to be evaluated at the point of origin that see slope can be evaluated it is something like your gm concept what is gm it is dzz by d theta at theta equal to 0 but if you have theta equal to 0 there is no zz but you can always evaluate the slope you see if you look at the zz curve also I have got here zz curves going like this zz is 0 here, but gm is slope of the curve at the origin right. See exactly here I have got the slope of the curve y equal to 0 at v 0 remember there is no y force, but there is a slope existing moment you give slight v there is a some value of y. I just want to know what is that if I give a small v how much y has come obviously it will be equal to the slope of the y curve into that change that is exactly what what would be my y force if I have given a small change about its mean it will be delta u into divided by dv plus delta v into this this is a concept that is most important that we have to understand this is the most important concept in our um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, this calculation. Now, comes some more interesting point of this reduction you see what is dy by du 
there is a shape here which is symmetric about this center line. Now, I have given a velocity here, this is my u and this is my y. Okay. Now, the question is that if I give here a change of velocity, will it give me a change of force here? That is the question. This dy by du means what is my rate of change of y force because of rate of change of velocity in the u direction. But the point is that in the u direction, if you change it, y force does not change because the shape is symmetric about this x axis. See the okay, okay. Now, now I, I may, maybe I will make this bigger, bigger one. So now here, dy by du is what? I have a shape here. This is my u. This is my y. The question here, du by dy, is rate of change of y force due to u velocity. Okay, this is the definition. Now the question is the shape is symmetric about this axis. So if I change the u velocity, if I, I see, let's say I was going at 10 meter per second, I just go to 11 meter per second. What would happen? It's going to give me a large difference in force this side. Will it give me force this side? No, because it is symmetric. Therefore, dy by du becomes equal to zero. Similarly, dy by du dot will become equal to zero because of the simple fact that u direction the ship is symmetric both sides. Similarly, the moment will be also 0 because what would happen if you change that whatever comes this side will get balanced with the other side. So, if, you, if I that, that is interesting because when, when I look back at that I can further reduce the equations and I can say that this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. So, I end up getting only this part. Okay. This is a very, very important and interesting uh, part of that. So, what I end up getting is therefore, is that I end up getting that y force becomes equal to delta v into dy by dv plus delta v dot dy by dv dot plus delta delta psi dot dy by d psi dot plus delta psi double dot dy by d psi double dot. Okay. Uh, this is what we end up getting. Now here I want to uh, have to say something um, uh, more at, at this point of time. Now you see what is my delta v, delta v dot, delta this thing. These are actually the small changes. Now it, there is no point of writing them as delta v because after all initially you see uh, I have a v velocity of 0. Now I have got v velocity of small value of say 0 0.1 meter per second. But that 0 0.1 meter per second is a change in v and I call that delta v. But I can also call that as a v itself because after all the ship was going at a, at a velocity here without, without any sway velocity. Now I have got a sway velocity, small number regardless. So I can call that as instead of delta v, I can call that as also v because delta v makes it more confusing. So I can call directly this as a v. So I can call that as a v of dy by dv. Because when the v is understood to be a small number, a ship cannot be, see a ship goes at 20, 10 meter per second here, it cannot go 10 meter per second this side. It, this side is only small number, it can only be a change with respect to the 0. And that I changed initially to illustrate that we call delta of v, but de, see in other words you can see this way, v equal to v 0 plus delta v, but v 0 is 0, therefore delta v is v. So, whatever small number you get is the sway velocity. Okay. So, I use this nomenclature because delta v is no point of, so whatever sway velocity I get, small number is the change of sway velocity because my initial sway velocity was 0. Initially, I had a 0 velocity, sway velocity as well as yaw velocity. Similarly, you will find out that I can call delta v as v, delta v dot as v dot, delta uh, psi dot dot at delta psi uh, psi dot dot and delta psi dot at delta uh, sorry psi dot or this is actually r dot this is actually r. Why so can call like this? It, it follows from here even otherwise you can know 
that the change of sway velocity is itself the sway velocity because the change is with respect to 0 mean. Initially it was 0, now I am having a 0.1 meter per second. So, 0 0.1 meter per second is my delta v as well as v. Okay. This is all uh, question nom is nomenclature. So, I can write this as v, v dot delta u i by delta v dot plus. Uh, let me call this to be now r delta y by delta r plus r dot delta y by delta r dot. If you look at this, I come back to little more this thing, you find that y force is essentially is very simple expression. It is because there is a sway velocity small number into the rate of change of sway. What is the, see any, I have got now a sway velocity of some 0.1 meter, but I know what is dy by dv. I know that per unit change of sway velocity I, have, I get this much. So, therefore, if I have got a change of uh, sway velocity of v, then I my total force is this. See, let me say dy by dv is equal to 1, which means I get 1 unit of y per unit of v, but now I have got v of 0.1 meters, therefore 1 into 0.1 is my force, that is all, it's like that. So, I have got y because of some v, because of some v dot, because of some r, because of some r dot. I do not have y for u and u dot because u direction do not give me v force. This is a simple explanation that we end up getting for y force for a ship which is initially going steadily, which is always the case. So, I, I, now I will uh, explain that the two by writing uh, the physical meaning at more detail. So, I am end up getting this as because I am writing these two together that is why I am writing again. Similarly, if I do n, I will get exactly the same thing, it will just get changed by n here. I will end up getting like this, okay. If I if I do that, I, I, I basically I am going to end up getting like this. What is this? We must understand what are these y and n forces. These are y force and n moment for a shape initially moving in a straight line, but now has a small velocity v, v uh, r and acceleration v dot r dot. Initially it was going v 0, r 0, v dot 0, r dot 0, y 0, everything is 0. Now I have got a small value of v, small value of r, small value of v dot, small value of r dot. What is my y force and n force? Obviously it is that small value into the rate of change against that value, that is all. So in fact it, you can easily find out this is a nothing but an expression of y and n in terms of rate of change. Y changes with respect to v in this rate. Therefore, if v has become so much, my y is going to be v into dv that rate. But y changes also because of change in v dot, y changes also because of r, y changes also because of r dot. So, it basically changes for these four parameters, the two velocities to acceleration. So, I have got this expression as simple as that. No, no motion in this direction. Uh, in fact, it can be, um, but we are not complicating that. There, the force may come because of propulsion characteristic, but we are not right now uh, considering that for the simple case. We are thinking of a ship having a propeller fixed, not changing. You're going in a straight line. Okay. This is my expression of only change. Now, a, another thing that happens is that this dy by dv, etc. This these expressions are written as y v. I mean dy instead of writing dy by dv always you write at y suffix v, y suffix v means dy by dv, something by something dx uh, see dy by say uh, dA by d alpha is A suffix alpha that is how we are writing, that is the nomenclature. So, you write that like this, you write that v dot of y v dot, you call this r y r dot, you call this r dot, oh, sorry no, no, it is not r dot, r. Y, like that. 
So you write like that. In other words, the, the convention, I will write me convention d of d, say a by alpha, is written as d alpha, a alpha. You write this convention. Derivative against something is that value with a suffix because it makes it easier, okay. So therefore that is dy by say dr dot, it will be y r dot as an example. You can say, you can say, you can say an operator a coefficient actually, basically you are rewriting that, you know it is just writing in a short form, okay. No, it is not, you are not simplifying, you are writing using a different convention that is also I am end up getting y as y v into v plus y v dot v dot plus y r r plus y r dot r dot n as n let me write with respect to y okay n v v plus n v dot v dot plus n r r plus n r dot r dot you, you have just got this, what we have done here, I am just rewriting that. This is my one part of the equation. See these terms, these terms y v, y v dot, n v, n v dot, uh, y r, y r dot, n v, uh, sorry, n r, n r dot, these eight numbers, these are, will be called as hydrodynamic derivatives. I will tell you later on about this later on. We will come back to that little little more uh, later, little little later. Let me now complete the equation of motion. So I have got this. Now you see, this was last, we started with this expression of Newton's equation of motion which we, we have got u dot minus psi dot v minus say x g psi dot dot square, no sorry psi dot square, well I am using y g equal to 0 because as I said that most ships will have no, co the same LCG, T c g is 0, we had y equal to m of v dot plus u psi dot plus x g psi dot square and n was equal to i z psi double dot plus m x g v dot plus psi dot u. This was my Newton's equation of motion. We we had that now. See remember, I have got two systems. One is that this side x, y, n forces or rather forget this one, these two, I express them if the ship was going on a straight line and if it made a small change what happened to my y and n force, what is the expression and I found out sorry uh, that the expression is something like this, I found this expression. On the other hand I have got this equation which is what is my y and n force, if I have got a value of v dot, y dot etcetera, etcetera all that. Now I must combine the two, but in combination of two this right hand side I should use the fact that my v dot is a small value psi dot is a small value etcetera because remember that these values are nothing but the small values. You see because the, the expression for the force that I have used remember that expression for the force okay this u etcetera here it is the exact value of u and v but there it is not so. So I must use that fact that this expression is meant for those values of u v w which are small values. Now why I say that because of this term I will explain to you, <coughs> there, there, is a, there is a reason why one, one does that. See here, I have got v equal to delta v, okay. I have got psi v dot equal to delta v dot, psi equal to delta psi, uh, psi sorry psi dot or psi double dot is delta psi double dot, but u equal to u plus delta u, the u was much larger you see. Why we are doing that now I want to see, express that in this fashion and see because I want to use this to this part. What happens we, we, want, we want to see 
what happens to that because there's a you see remember there's a u psi dot u is a, not a small number u is a large number remember u is a large number isn't it this u is a large number because it is not delta u because the ship is traveling in the direction u at 10 knots and now it is making small changes on the 10 knot 10.2 knot 9.9 knot etc so u is a large number we have to remember that now let me see what happened to this term this v dot plus u psi uh, dot plus xg this is becomes delta v dot because v dot is delta v dot this becomes u this u plus delta u into delta psi dot right you see because u is this thing and this becomes of course xg into delta psi dot square now you see this of course remains like this delta v dot but here i have got two terms one is a u into delta psi dot plus delta u into delta psi dot plus xg into delta psi dot square but this term happens to be very small because it is small into small so we neglect that so therefore this has this becomes delta v dot plus u here this is my steady velocity into delta psi dot plus x g into delta psi dot square which I can rewrite back as v dot because delta v dot is again v dot but only thing that is small u has changed to now big u into psi dot plus x g into uh, psi dot square. So you see what happened that is very that, that is what I wanted to tell I had the expression of v dot plus u psi dot plus x g psi dot square this has now changed to v dot plus u psi dot plus x g psi dot square this term has become capital u psi dot when i am taking small values of u dot v dot psi dot that means if it is making a small perturbation then this term this this forward term becomes the steady forward velocity into that psi dot that is very important to realize uh, that, that what we are um, uh, trying to tell in fact we can call this u as u1 if you want but this is my steady velocity or, or initial velocity I, maybe I can call it u1 that is it becomes v dot plus initial velocity steady velocity into psi dot plus xg psi dot square whereas this this term was instant instantaneous u velocity that is that is yes it is called a large magnitude yes that is okay that it be there but u dot was see this is say point 0.1 this was 10 plus point 0.1 into point 0.1 this is again point 0.1 so 10 plus 1 into point 0.1 becomes you know 10 into point 0.1 plus point 0.1 into point 0.1 the point 0.1 into point 0.1 part we are neglecting so 10.1 into point 0.1 is equal to 10 into point 0.1 to that approximation this is what we are doing uh, or this is what is logical because uh, we have actually gone up to that point only so okay so if you do that then uh, i think what um, uh, i will end up to, up to this so i end up getting this to be for this uh, let me write this u dot minus psi dot v plus okay this actually was not necessary to write and you are still for completion we are writing uh, in fact this will turn out to be actually m u dot only uh, uh, that, that i will explain later on uh, little little uh, it is not necessary right now y becomes equal to m into v dot plus psi dot u plus x g psi dot, dot this becomes equal to m of v dot plus psi dot u 1 I am calling u 1 here x g into psi dot uh, okay now there is a okay no, no, let me let me see no then y no i think that y i think i made a mistake y should be xg no no it should be xg psi double dot this is not square i think this is this is a mistake you this correct it it will be it will be actually double dot not not square in fact the square term will not exist actually in fact i made a mistake uh, psi dot square actually will go to 0 because psi dot is a small number the square goes to 0 so actually this will not be here in fact this expression this is small this is small small into small goes to 0 small into small goes to 0 that is why it becomes only mu dot here is small this is small but this is small into large plus small 
it so therefore it remains small into large that is what happens I am sorry this was actually double dot yes this is not uh, in the, the, the y velocity double dot x1 is square in fact it is other way around yeah you maybe make this correction n becomes i z of psi double dot plus x g again here this this will change here into psi double dot plus a m x g v dot plus psi dot into u 1. So, I have got this site this is reduced to this this has reduced to this it is a you do not actually have to go through the, all the mathematics it is very simple this is small this is small small into small is too small small into small is too small neglect it small this is small so you have to keep it this is small into large plus small so it is small into large plus small into small so you maintain small plus large small small into large you know small into large like here also small into large plus small that is small into large so this u1 is actually is the initial steady velocity okay now we are in a position to combine that two now we are able to combine the two sides that is i have got this uh, i mean forget the x part we will not really do or we can do i have got this y part n part and i have got here y part n part x part also we can do but we will not do the x part now because we are not interested so what happened i have got this y this side here i have got y from other side here so i am going to combine that two okay i am going to write here y equal to this from that side equal to that from this side. So, by doing that by combining the two I will end up getting this relation now combine I will end up getting relation is y v v plus y v dot v dot plus y r r plus y r dot r dot equal to m into v dot plus psi dot actually instead of psi dot we should write r maybe let me write here r u1 plus xg r dot square because psi no no sorry not square r dot i think i'll rewrite again maybe as anyhow you can understand this is this is dot here uh, then this is from nv v plus nv dot v dot plus nr r plus nr dot r dot equal to iz r dot plus m x g v dot plus r into u 1 this we get basically you know this is from the one side that's from the other side so we can combine the two if you combine the two i mean i will just bring them and make them to be zero so i'll end up getting this relation which will look something like this minus y v v because we are bringing it on that side so doesn't matter plus m minus y v dot v dot okay i think y v v goes that side then m v dot minus y dot, okay then this uh, we are just going that side minus y r minus m yeah m into this minus y it is minus here yeah okay the minus plus minus makes this plus oh, fine u 1 r minus y r dot minus m x g r dot equal to 0 this is 1 and we get minus n v v minus n v dot okay dot m x g u 1 yes into r plus i i z minus n r dot these are my classical equations of motion in the horizontal plane for a ship initially moving and along a straight line you see this the expression that we have got here this is n v dot no these expressions are my equations of motion in the horizontal plane therefore what happens is that if i know this hydrodynamic coefficients actually if i know the solution of the this equation i have to find out how does v and r grow 
with time what is the nature of my solution for v and r see v and r is my yaw velocity and yaw acceleration and v dot and r dot we want to know does v and r with time increases or decreases because here i have given a small value i have removed the force it has set up v and r v dot and r dot and those v and r v dot and r dot has set up my forces now this force equal to uh, uh, you know uh, motion i now i want to see this equation of motion will tell me the solution of that that forces that uh, uh, sorry uh, that uh, velocities that was generated because of some disturbance which in turn generates a force does it generate a force at an increasing order or decreasing order because if that force you think of a loop type for some reason i have given a v now this v gives me a y force if this y force is such that this y force increases my v then it would have made the my v larger then the, this v would have made my y even larger that y would have made my v even more larger it would have been unstable but if it is the other way around i have gotten v which produced an y force this y force is in such a direction that it tries to reduce my v then that v would have become little small then the y would have become still smaller then that would give me my v even more smaller it will go to zero so this is what is what is called the st study of stability that we will we will talk next class is given by the characteristic characteristic solution of this equation here i have got v v dot r r dot and all this coefficient i want to know v v dot r r dot the, do they grow with time or do they reduce with time i have to see and I, my shape would be stable if they reduce with time this is exactly why you need to find out the forces you, you, we could have done that ship is stable unstable we cannot do that in this case for the very simple reason that the forces are necessarily created because of the velocity and acceleration which are fluid forces and it is a force and the velocity interplay that tells me whether the ship is stable or unstable so we will uh, pick up from this point and next class study the property of uh, or the characteristic of or the requirement for a ship to be stable from the solution for that we won't go to the detailed solution just some preliminary ideas okay i'll i'll stop it here for today Okay, uh, today we will talk about see yesterday we actually ended up in what is called equation of motion. Okay. Now the equation of motion we actually had, I will just write it, <coughs> write it again. It was something like y v v plus a minus, oh, I think y v dot v dot minus y r minus m u one r minus. this was one this is sway and we had see we had this two set of equations yesterday that we have found out represent a body or a ship moving initially along a straight line and was disturbed slightly. They are governed by this equation when v and v dot r r dot sway velocity sway acceleration yaw velocity yaw acceleration. Now what is meant by stability criteria and of course I will talk about the hydrodynamic derivative also is that first of all if you see that this equation you see this is the velocity in fact let me put a different color this one this one this 
this, 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 this are the two velocities and two acceleration. <coughs> this is my rigid body mass, this is my rigid body mass, this is my rigid body moment of inertia, this is a rigid body mass, rigid body mass. Okay. So I have got the blue ones, let me put them as blue, this rigid body mass, this is rigid body mass term, this is rigid body mass and you know the, the geometric term, rigid body mass and center of gravity. I think I mean the, 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 the entire uh, fluid is trying to push it on this direction. This push acts over the entire part of this longitudinal length, the full length gets pushed down. Now let us say, we, we can call it separately, say that this plus this plus this plus this all are added up. Obviously, when you add them all up, then you get a large number. Supposing this was pushing and this was pulling and it was this plus that, that could have been a, you know some, some number minus some number could have been either positive or negative. But in this case, it is not so. The entire hull, each, each point on, on the side facing gets a push. So I got, I get a large force when you, when you add them. I think I will explain that more with a V dot uh, rather than V, okay, because that will be more easier. See, if I give a V dot here, See if I give V dot here, same thing I am giving an acceleration. So I am again going to get la, you know all these forces on this side, all of them. See I am trying to accelerate that, okay, accelerate that side so I get all the forces this side. What would happen? If I uh, draw, draw V dot, also I get a large Y, okay. So I get Y V dot to be large Y, negative. So I get Y V dot to be a negative, okay. Now is it large or small? I want to uh, uh, answer you this question. See yv dot is nothing but like an added mass. yv dot is actually because I am given acceleration this side there is a reaction force. So you can say that the full fluid gets trying to get accelerated on that side which will give you inertia for opposite side. Because you see if I took this body and I try to accelerate on this negative acceleration then I get a mass into acceleration force on the negative direction. So that is why I get minus yv dot v dot. I get a force of minus y v dot v dot. This is like added mass into acceleration and added mass in sway and surge are of the order of the mass for this because I. No, 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 it can be positive I because I, I gave an example where if I give a v dot negative then I get y positive. Okay, you give a positive v dot you will get a force on the other side. This is a uh, mood debate I will uh, have to end now. See if you give a v here or v dot here then you get a force on this side. The point, the question here is that whichever direction you give V, Y is on the other direction, okay. Anyhow, we will pick up on that again in next, um, uh, you know, like class because the, this lecture time is up. We will pick up on that again, okay. So, I will end this one at this point. <coughs>